Isolation from friends and family. If one partner attempts to isolate the other from their social support network or discourages them from spending time with friends and family, it could be a sign of controlling behavior or an attempt to exert undue influence. Matter with this one on both sides. Sometimes wahu to samoto because they can see how your squad is just leading you astray. One other thing, you might have a big squad when you are single, but you might need to reduce it once you are in a relationship. This is because you now have to dedicate some of your time and attention to this new person in your life. intimate relationship You cannot have time for both. One of them will have to be in the background. If your partner decides to choose their squad over nurturing your relationship, then it shows that they will not be able to dedicate their time to the relationship or even marriage. Most of the relationships or marriages are broken up by family and friends. So be careful whom you associate yourself with before you judge your partner. Rapid escalation of intensity. While it's natural for feelings to develop quickly in a relationship, extreme intensity or rushing into commitments too soon can be a warning sign for others. Healthy relationships typically evolve at a comfortable pace for others. This doesn't apply to everyone, hence I keep on saying for others. There is no measure or rule to when to fall in love. We learn what love is every day. I'm still learning what love is and I've been married for 10 years in a couple of weeks. You probably thought you loved your ex more than life itself, but he or she is your ex now, so you were wrong. And then you learned to love your current partner. We will never fully understand what love is. So don't be too quick to run just because someone fell too quickly. Hence, they call it falling in love. You do not plan to fall. You just find yourself on the ground. I actually applaud people who fall in love too quickly because it simply means that they are not holding on to anything. They are free to let go and be in the moment. They do not have doubts about the future, nor are they holding on to the past. Free-spirited people. The world needs more of those people. Some people might see it as a red flag, but I do not. I mean, my husband and I started dating, let's say for example, on a Saturday this weekend, and then we went away to a lodge the next weekend. And you know, when, when we were there, he told me that he loved me. And if I followed society's rules, I would have thought that he's actually too quickly and I would have dumped him and thought I, would, I should meet someone who's going to tell me he loves me after three years. I mean, he told me after a week and this month we are turning 10 years into our marriage and 14 years together. So it's not always true. Society's needs or society's norms are not all true for everyone. Disregard for consent and boundaries. It's crucial to respect each other's boundaries and obtain consent for all physical and emotional interactions. Disregarding boundaries or pressuring someone into activities they're not comfortable with is a major red flag. Remember guys, you still need consent to be intimate with me, even if we are in a relationship or marriage. Decisions also have to be made unanimously. Learn to agree to disagree instead of going behind my back and do something that you will both regret. As partners, we have to also set realistic boundaries. Cheaters will say their phones and passwords constitute boundaries for reasons known to them. But that is a topic for another day. Now that we are done with the Western psychology's definition of red flags, let's touch on Zaruna, both people of Kala, Agir, Gundak. Just a note, I will be using pronouns he and she, her and him interchangeably. It shouldn't necessarily mean that I'm referring to that specific gender. When I refer to a specific gender, I will mention that I'm referring to a specific gender. So you found her kotave, but now you expect her to stop grooving because you are married. Marriage does not change a person's preferences. It just changes a woman's last name. If she demands money from you, regardless of whether you have it or not, or not caring where you will get it, that will not change after marriage. You will have to conquer heaven and earth to make the means to provide or else she will leave you. 
Support doesn't start in marriage. It starts while you are still in a relationship. And by support, I mean supporting each other financially, the both of you contributing to ideas and goals in the relationship. That's the support I'm talking about. By support, banyana, basad, I don't mean him uh, buying you weaves, doing your nails, buying you clothes, groceries, and all the things that your dating needs to do for you. If you cannot sit down with your partner and discuss budget, finances, while still in the relationship, that will not change in a marriage. Whatever they see fit with their money, it's their money again. In a relationship, you build each other for marriage. You prepare each other for the long term. It doesn't start on the day that you say, I do. I do is just a formalization of everything. People who use terms like girlfriend allowance, get a red flag. That person is not going to help you build a financially free home. She is going to demand the allowance even when you do not have the means to do so. This one is not for richer or poorer. She is only there for richer. It has to be both ways. I give you boyfriend allowance and you give me girlfriend allowance. Both parties must contribute to the financial well-being of the relationship. We do not live in medieval times. We cannot go to, I don't know who, like the apes. Our times are hard. We need both parties to contribute. The most boring part of it is that you demand so much from the man as if they are supposed to financially support you like they are your fathers. Some of you don't even know who your fathers are. Some of you, your fathers don't even know how much your daycare was, but you expect this person who just met you to be financially taking care of you. That's just being selfish. Remember John in my previous video, he married someone who believed in being taken care of financially, not someone who believed that the responsibility can be shared or even switched around sometimes. When a woman can take care of herself from the get-go, it means that she will also be capable of continuing with the finances until the other partner gets back on their feet. A woman who will say things like, I will not clean his room before he puts a ring on it. Look. I support the statement, but we have to be fair again. If that is one of the conditions for him to put a ring on it, we should also see it fit that the guy doesn't contribute financially towards me before he puts a ring on it. You are willing to sit in a filthy room because you are not married. I mean, that's all. You are lazy. It's simple. You cannot expect him to take on the role of a father, financial provider, and cannot expect you to take on the role of his mother, the cleaner or the helper. You will both learn to share these responsibilities the day after you say I do. Because when you want a ring on it.